In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to calculate ANOVA using Microsoft Excel. The final product looks something like this, plus I'm going to do the degrees of freedom also. Each step of the way, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, then I'll show you how to do it in Excel. So total sum of squares is taking all the samples and treating them as one large sample. And we will calculate, and I'll show you how to do that in Excel. And this is equal to sum of squares between groups, which is looking at the variance between the groups. And finally, we'll calculate sum of squares within groups. And that's looking at the variation or the variance within a group itself. I'm only going to show you how to calculate in Excel sum of squares within groups and also total sum of squares because if I can make these two calculations, I can figure out sum of squares between groups. So I have three samples, and I'm going to take the sum of each sample, the sum of squares of each sample, and that's the variance of each sample. And I will calculate the sum, I'll just add them all up together, and also the mean for each of the samples. And I'll do that for all three of the samples. Let me flip over to Excel. And I've already typed in my values and my headings and everything else. So I'll just type in sum, S-U-M. And I click on 2 at the top right there. And I drag down to 6. And I do a close parenthesis. And that gives me the sum of group 1. I click the equal sign and type the word sum. I click on 10. I drag down to 10 again and close parentheses and it gives me the sum of group 2. And now group 3, I do the same thing. I type sum, click on 10 and drag down to 15, close parentheses. There. Now I click equal and type the word average, same as mean. And I click on 2 and drag down to 6 and close parentheses. And that gives me the average value for group 1. I do the same thing for group 2. Type the word average. Nope, almost got it. Average. And open parentheses and click on 10. Drag down, close parentheses. And my average for group 2 is 8. And now for group 3, I'll do the same thing. Type the average. Click on 10 and drag down. There. And now I have the mean for each sample and the sum. Now I'm going to take the mean and I'm going to subtract it from each observation. So I have 3 minus 4, 7 minus 4, and so on and so forth. So 2 minus 4 is equal to negative 2. And I'll repeat this for every observation. So 3 minus 4 is equal to negative 1, and so on and so forth. Now, if I add these up, I take the sum, it should always equal to 0. Now, I am going to square each value. So, negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared should be 1. 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 squared is 4. And 2 squared is 4. Now, I'll sum all those up, and that should equal to 22. And I'll do this for all of the different uh, samples or groups. And now let me go back to Excel. Now I'm going to take the difference between the observation and the mean. And I need a dollar sign right in front of that 9. Let me click on that again. If I put a dollar sign right in front of that 9, what it does is it holds the row constant. So I'm always subtracting cell B9. So I click on negative 2 and I drag down. I'm just dragging the formula down by doing this, and this gives me my x minus my mean, or my observation. Now I'm going to put the sum over there too, it should always equal 0, which is good. Now I'm going to square that value, so I take 2, little hat, and that's above the 6, that's 4, and I just drag that down, straight down, like that. And I sum that up. Hit the equal sign and type the word sum, click on the 4 and drag it down. And that is sum of squares for group 1, 22. I do the same thing for group 2. So I take 10 minus the mean of 8. And i got to make sure I put a dollar sign right there to keep it constant. 
and I just drag all that down like that. I sum it and that equals to zero. So I take um, that two and I square it and that equals four. And now I drag that down. It drags all the formulas down right there. I'll just drag my value over that zero because it has the sum calculation in it and that is equal to 18. Now I take the observation, which is 10, minus the mean of 13. And I put the dollar sign in front of the 9 again, like that. And I drag that down, straight down. Now I square all these values. So I take negative 3 squared, which is 9. And then I drag down the formulas. Voila. And finally, I just take that 65, which contains the sum, and drag it across those two rows like that, and there I go. The sum of squares within groups is equal to 22 plus 18 plus 14. So I take, I'm going to take each, each one of these in Excel in a second, and I'll add them all together as well. And these all sum up to 54. And I'll use the notation SSW in Excel instead of writing that whole word out. It's just easier. I type in SSW, and I'm going to add 22, 18, and 14. I click the equal sign, click on 22, plus sign, click on 18, plus sign, click on 14, and that equals 54. Now I'm going to calculate total sum of squares, and that's taking all three samples and treating it as one large sample. And I'll take the variance from the mean as well on this one. And that's my total sum of squares. So I take the mean. Now the mean is going to equal 8.3. I'll calculate it in Excel too, but I'm just going to show you or tell you it's 8.3. And I'm going to take the observation minus the mean. And then I'm going to square that. And I'm going to sum this up. And the sum is going to equal to 257.3. Again, I'm going to calculate this. And this is total sum of squares, or SST. Sum of squares total. Now let me go over to the Excel and show you how I calculate this. I want to write the word observations, or total observations. I'm just going to cut and paste all the observations from group one. I will do the same thing for group two, cut and paste. Finally, I'll do the same thing for group three. So I'm treating it as one large sample. Calculate the mean by typing in average and selecting the first value, which is 2, and dragging down to the bottom, close parentheses, like that. And the average is 8.3. That's our mean. Same thing. Now I click on the cell right there, and I'm going to type in uh, x minus mean, which is the observation minus the mean, which in this case is 2 minus 8.3. I'm going to put a dollar sign right in front of the 28, so I always use that row. I click on the 6.3. Oops. If I get the little plus sign, I drag straight down. That copies the formula all the way down. Now I'm going to take the x minus mean, or the observation minus the mean. I'm going to square it. So I have the 2. I'm going to format that cell, format cells, and I'm going to make that a superscript. Now I click on 6.3, negative 6.3, a little hat which is above the 6, and I square it. And I drag it all the way down straight like that. There I go. Now I'm going to sum all this up. I'm just going to type the word sum here. 
click on equal sign, write the word sum, click on the 40.1 and drag all the way down like that, and close parentheses, 257.3. That's the same as a sum of squares total. Now I've calculated total sum of squares, and this is equal to sum of squares between groups plus sum of squares within groups. I can solve algebraically for sum of squares between groups. I put in 257.3, which is equal to, let me drag this down, sum of squares between groups plus 54. Now I can subtract 54 from both sides of the equation. And this is equal to 203.3. And that's equal to sum of squares between groups. So I just want to show you what I'm going to do before I do it in Excel. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to calculate sum of squares between groups. That's the point of this. I just want you to kind of know what's going on before I do it. Now I just type in total sum of squares, and I'll hit the equal sign, I'll put the value there, but I'll hit the equal sign, just click 257.3. Now I type in sum of squares within, and that is equal to 54, I'll hit the equal sign and click on 54. And voila, I'm going to type in sum of squares between groups now, or between samples. And then I hit a equal sign and subtract 257.3, actually subtract 54 from 270.3, and there I got it, 203.3. Now that's really the hard part, and now I'm going to do some final calculations. So I have the sum of squares between groups divided by degrees of freedom, and this is equal to 203.3 divided by the degrees of freedom. And it's equal to groups minus 1, and I have three groups. So I have 203.3 divided by 2, which is equal to 101.667. Now, I uh, will take sum of squares within groups and divide by its degrees of freedom. And this is equal to 54 divided by observations minus groups. So I have a total of 15 observations minus 3 groups. So it equals 12. So I have 54 divided by 12. And now that equals 4.5. Now let me bring the, both of these numbers back in. And I, the F, their F ratio is actually 101.667 divided by 4.5, which is equal to 22.59. Now let me go back to Excel. This is my F score, but let me go back to Excel now. Eventually, there. So now I'm going to... Calculate the degrees of freedom. First, I'll do the numerator, then the denominator. So now I have three. So I have three minus one. I have three groups first, second, and third group, three groups. And the denominator, I'm going to count up. I'm going to type in count. So I just hit equal sign and type the word count and open parentheses. Now I click on my first observation and drag down, close parentheses, and that gives me a count of 15. Now I subtract minus three, which is the number of groups. And 15 minus three is 12. And now I hit equal sign and click on sum of squares between mean value and divide that by two, which is 101.7. Now I hit the equal sign and I take 54 divided by 12, which is 4.5. And now I hit equal sign. I'm going to divide 101.7 divided by 4.5. By clicking on those cells. That is equal to 22.6. And that is my F score. Finally, holy cow, share the knowledge. Like me, please like me. 
like me on Facebook, like me here. I don't have any friends. So subscribe. So share the knowledge, share the wealth, party more, study less.